very good morning and welcome to the Ladies Club. So good to be in your company as we focus in on women's sport. And today we've got a game changer that I cannot wait to start speaking to. She is the captain of the Spa Proteas national netball team, Bongi Msomi. And she's also a professional netball player. In 2018, she starts uh, her uh, season in Adelaide, in Australia, with the Thunderbirds in the best netball league in the world. Very good morning to you and welcome to the Ladies Club. Good morning. It's great to be here. Thanks for having me. All right, so we've changed things up a little bit. We're in a new studio and we're also starting with our game changer today. Uh, but before we do, we like to set the tone for the show and we always do that by looking at a quote. And today's quote comes from a famous Olympic gold medalist gymnast, Dominique Dawes. She said, there will be mistakes and there will be falters. There will be things that are not part of your plan. See the challenges in your life, accept them and embrace them. Now, this is something that's so true isn't it of all sports people and you yourself have also got a very personal recollection of sometimes you don't expect things to go a certain way and then you kind of just go with the path and you look back and you're like how did we get here it's actually exciting because when you look back um, to the things that you thought there were challenges or the things that could stop you from being uh, the person that you look to being or for the things that you want to achieve then you look back and say it was actually good that all those things happened because then they created a person that I am today or they had an influence um, towards um, the person I am um, today. So it's really nice to embrace where you come from, take it with you and don't forget that because it plays, it plays such a huge role um, going forward in life. And we're going to hear how your whole story has followed you not only now to Australia, but it's followed you all over the world and in the national netball team. Oh, most definitely. Um, for me, it's quite uh, exciting to look back and think I never even had a thought of playing netball before I started, and it's eventually happened. And I quite like the fact that I was, I, I really grew up in a family that had so much uh, focus on respect, and um, the culture was really um, very focused. And if I look at all those things, I really hated it back then, but now, um, it's played such a huge role. I now have to lead the Spa Pro Tears. Huge, huge um, role to play. But it all goes back to the fact that I, I had those probably leadership skills um, from back home. So it's really nice to look back and see everything links into the person you you're becoming. It's quite exciting. So take those challenges in your stride is certainly the message that's coming from our national netball captain, Bongi Msomi. Would you believe she's the five of eight children uh, from Hammersdale in KZN? And she says that her family were never actually into sport. I don't believe this, considering what you have managed to achieve in sport. It's, I think it probably comes to a point where people say it, it's, it's genes. You know, it's come from the genes from your parents. I don't know. I, I think I was quite lucky to just step into sport and really be very focused and really try and get as fit as I could. I, I really understood the fact that you can perform when you're ready, when you're ready mentally and physically, and I tried by all means to, to really do that. And I had so much support behind me, I can't take that for granted. So, yeah, I've been lucky to have people that could help me. Um, just in naming one person that... Uh, has been in this journey with me, uh, Tembi Sob Mwabe. Um, he used to be my, my high school teacher, and even today he follows my netball, and um, he tries and make me understand that you probably didn't play well. You know, when everyone says, <laughs> oh, you did a great job, and you would be like, no, why did you take those long lines? Why not this one? So I think he, he's been really a great mentor uh, to have just a high school teacher to find your talent and to nurture it until at this stage. Sometimes it says, I, dream, I dreamt of you uh, playing uh, for the national side, but not being a professional netball player. So this is huge for him as well. Um, and it's nice to be an example back home. Well, South African netball is so thankful to Lit uh, Litai Hai uh, in Hammersdale and also to Mr Mkwabi, who actually managed to see your talent and actually direct it to you. We are on social media, so easy, on Twitter and on Facebook. Hashtag The Ladies Club. You can get in contact with the show at sport at SABC or at Phelan Cody. Are you on social media? Oh, yes, I am, definitely. <laughs> okay, what are those handles? Because people <laughs> want to speak to you too. On Facebook, I'm Bongiwe Bo Msobi. Um, on Twitter, it's um, at Bongiwe Msobi too. 
at Bongi Msomi 2. Our trailblazer today is none other than Irene van Dijk. And she is a woman that is not only a netball icon in South Africa and New Zealand, but she is a global netball icon. Nobody has more caps than this woman. She played as captain of South Africa for five years, then changed nationality to New Zealand and went from strength to strength, only retiring at the age of 42. I mean, Irene has just managed to achieve so much, hasn't she? She is such an amazing woman. I I eventually got to know her when I started playing uh, for the Spa Proteas. Um, the fact that every time when she sees South Africans, you could just see um, in her face that she really um, appreciates us and she just wants to be involved with what we're doing. Um, personally, I felt like she was just one of the people that people that you, you just want to sit and talk with, um, learn as much as you can. And really, she's been an amazing, amazing netball player from our country to go overseas to New Zealand and really perform like she's been performing until she retired. I think um, in our netball um, family, everyone talks about her, everyone really admires her. And I personally didn't even know much about her, but when I got to speak to her, even today, I can really say, proud to call her a legend. We really want to have people like that and it shows that South Africa has talent if we have Irene van Dijk to come from our country, represent our country and then go overseas and excel like she did. I'm sure she's living a life, um, she enjoys it and it's really cool to see that. She's such a great example um, for us as well going forward. I know you said a mouthful. There's going to be a little bit more to say about mm -hmm. Irene, our trailblazer on the Ladies Club today, but that continues after the break. Welcome back to the show. You're watching The Ladies Club. Thanks for staying with us. Remember, it's easy to join the conversation on social media, on Twitter, at sports at SABC, at Vail and Kirtley. Just use our hashtag, hashtag The Ladies Club. Bongi says she's most active on Facebook, so follow her here in the studio and then with the national team, which these days just can only bring good news. And all the way to Australia on Facebook, she's Bongiwe Bo. Saw me. So, so easy to be in contact with her. Before the break, I promised that we'd continue speaking about our trailblazer, who today is Irene van Dijk. She's a woman that has won two world championship medals of two different colors with two different countries, actually. The silver medal with South Africa and a gold with New Zealand, one of many accolades that she managed to win with the silver ferns. Now, something that I see with Irene and that she's well known for is for her technical astuteness. And this is something that you, as a player, yourself also bring to a court and believe strongly in? Oh, definitely. Um, the technicality of the game is really what counts and what matters uh, when you play this game, uh, especially when you have to play for different clubs um, for your country. Every time you meet different players, you have to find a way of linking in with everyone. So it's really, um, you can work the physicality parts um, of your sport and work the mentality part, but then the technicality of it is very important. And that's really, um, I think, what will now make Irene van Dijk the icon she is because you could see even um, the, the way she used to play this game, she'll be so in sync with what's happening uh, during the game and obviously try and avail herself whenever she called strong um, physical, uh, in physical and yeah, it's also something that I look forward to being and um, I really strive to really work well, especially with my technicality of the game. Coming from rural areas, we used to play um, just casual netball and you didn't really have um, to see a lot of things, different aspects of the game. So now it's a very big focus for me and it seems to be going well, can be better at any time. You mentioned a little bit about Irene's character when we first started speaking about her and how she lights up um, and she's so open to sharing with netball players from South Africa. But I think that's true of any netball player that actually she comes into contact with, which is why she's become the role model she has. For you, I see a similar trait that you enjoy being personable. You enjoy being open and speaking openly. Is it important for you to be a role model and to be an accessible role model? Um, definitely. It's um, being a role model for me. 
it's really uh, something that you have to work for and you have to abide by certain things because there's people looking um, after you and especially for the kids that dream to be where we are I might not have much in my understanding but they see what I have now as big as I don't know what I can uh, compare it to so it's quite very important to really um, meet people and be um, generous where you can be probably not too much sometimes but yeah it's you, you have to find ways of how to speak what can make this person sad what can lighten up their days um, and that I'll say probably comes from being South African. A lot of us are mostly like that and Irene is a good example. She left um, South Africa to go and have a career in New Zealand but she's still as, as an amazing person as she could be. So it's quite nice uh, for us as South Africans to look up to someone like that because then you know um, it doesn't matter what you have, what you've achieved, you can still be the same person that you, could be, you, um, you were before. You can still see people the same way as you obviously used to see them with so much respect, humbleness, but still um, achieving what you're achieving in life. Let's shift the focus back on to you because Bongi Msomi is of course today's game changer, our captain of our national women's netball team. It started very humble beginnings, Lutai High in Hammersdale, in KZN, but no one would have guessed for what you've actually achieved in mm -hmm. the sport that you only picked up a netball when you were 16 years old. It's definitely amazing. Even um, today, I would say this year when my name was announced um, for the spa project, yes, I still pinch myself. It's still exciting. It's still as, it feels as fresh as um, you can imagine. Um, I look back and I think I wish I could have started earlier, but then I think I probably would have um, hit enough of it by now. So I think it's quite a, a there was a nice balance and obviously God has plans for everyone. I think it all comes from him. Um, but again, yeah, if I, look, I really look back and I think of a bongi without netball, I don't even know what it would have been and don't even want to experience any other life um, besides this one. It's, it's, a, it's been an exciting journey, challenging most of the time, um, financially, um, obviously a, a couple of things I'll say um, I had to learn um, to differentiate uh, between, uh, like to have a difference between uh, certain things. I had to learn quick. There's a lot of things that I didn't know about. Obviously coming from Hammersdale to meeting different people, to being in hotels, um, to taking flights, uh, in airports all by myself. A lot of things people will just take for granted, but it's been really um, a challenging journey. I've been enjoying every second of it because now when I look at it, where on earth would I have heard so much experience um, if I didn't play this sport, so much opportunities if I didn't play this sport. So yeah, sometimes things can be challenging, but it just grows you as a person. And yes, the sports, the experience it has um, given me, I've grown so much as a person, as a woman. And it's quite good to just um, be yourself and know that you, you've really worked hard and just get rewarded sometimes for the work that you put in. If you look at some of your peers from Lutai High, and if you have to think that maybe if you didn't mm. hypothetically find netball, where you would be? Oh my goodness. Um, it's actually not funny because when I got back home, all the girls I used to play with, they look at me like I'm this hero now. Like you could swear I've got so much. Um, they'll probably think financially I'm the queen of which it's, um, I think it's probably the way I see myself as well, the way I will walk uh, or the way I talk or the way I um, do things. I, I try not to be as far apart from everyone, but when I really look back, I think I'm fortunate. I'm very fortunate to have this opportunity. Um, probably some of the girls wouldn't even finish school. So if I look at it, uh, yes, I've been lucky. I've been finished school I went to a university after that and I still had my netball I still have my netball now I'm not even into retiring any um, anytime soon so it's uh, a, a different life and it's a life that I wouldn't want to really leave um, I think I'm excited where I am and I'm really happy obviously when I got back home it's uh, I, I do want to support um, where I can but one cannot do everything um, perfectly for other people it's it's just um, 
a different world. I get goosebumps because I can also see Bongi's eyes starting to tear up a little bit, having to think about a Hammersdale and where she's come from. It's made her the humble person that she is, and it's really and truly the game of netball has taken her all over the world. She's played in the English Premier League for netball on two different in two different years, two different seasons, and now she uh, is going to be playing in Australia for the year ahead, and all of it has benefited the Spa. Proteus netball team. We'll speak about this and more after the break. Welcome back to the Ladies' Club, where our game changer today is our national netball captain, wing attack for the national team, Bongiwe Msomi. You mentioned that people look at you, they see you on TV, they see what you've achieved, they see you flying all over the world, playing in England and Australia, and they think that you've got lots of money. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, this is not the case when it comes to women's sport. There is still a massive gender pay gap. Oh, definitely. Um, I think it is uh, a challenging factor. and. Obviously, everyone knows about it, and we're hoping it will improve by the time goes. But yeah, it's a, such a different feeling when you seen and we expected to have um, so much, because then that alone, so a couple of us might change the way they do things, just to give a different impression to people, which is not fair. One is bound to live their life the way they want um, to, and you. It's just nice to be yourself and not having to prove um, whatever the expectations are out there. But yeah, I really hope it gets better because I do feel the women in sports need to be really recognised better than what's happening now. And you guys are bringing the results because this is always the argument, you know, bring the results and then we'll get the sponsors and then the money will come and so on and so forth. And you guys as a team, uh the national netball team have really been performing the best ever performance against Australia in September last year. You topped that in London by losing by just four points in a match where you actually were named player of the game, which is always something I find so phenomenal if you are in the losing team, but you still <laughs> manage to win the individual accolade for the game. So you guys have just been having phenomenal results. And then, of course, it was that historic win against England also in September last year. All of these as part of the quad series. Oh, most definitely. I think um, the Spa Proteas have really been doing wonders. Um, the quad series has been um, really on our side. Uh, it's given us such the great improvement, especially going ahead uh, this year with Commonwealth Games coming up. Um, later um, during the year, there'll probably be a Diamond Challenge as well. So it's a, a great build up for the side. And um, for the play of the match, if you play against such great legends, such great fighters, one is bound to be named a player of the match. And I was the fortunate one on the day. And in saying that, I even said to uh, the lady that interviewed me, if I could split that medal, I'll just give it to the rest of the girls because yes, they played awesome. But again, so much efforts behind the scenes, preparing um, to get to camp, to play these games ready um, physically and mentally. I really think the girls, uh, if, even if not Bongi, but the girls deserve way more recognition, way more um, support. And um, we're hoping, it, not even for netball only, but it will come in South Africa uh, for all the women in sport or sports um, women that are really putting the efforts and putting the work out there um, to represent especially the country. I re I'm really proud of the spa proteas. The, girl are the girls are really improving every time they step on the courts. And we've been playing number... Um, one in three um, in the world, and we've been really closing the gap. So it's, it's quite exciting improvement for us, and we're looking forward to really seeing what this year has for us. And you, as the leader of a team, are managing to do it, you and the, the team are managing to do it with very little resource and very little backing. What is there is fantastic, but it's very little in comparison to what you see with maybe the men's national teams and different sporting codes. Oh, most definitely. And I really think we are a proof that if you have a goal and you want to achieve that goal, nothing can stop you. And um, in saying that, it doesn't take away the fact that we still need support and we still need to be well looked after, like the men's um, sport is getting uh, the, the support and everything they need financially, most especially. Um, I really... I pride myself to sit here and say, 
so much uh, women in sports are doing wonders with that really much that they're getting. And it's, it's, it's quite interesting. And it's, it just proves that we are very powerful as women to just uh, behind the scenes, be prepared to take, to, do, to spend your time in preparing for what's coming ahead uh, with that much that you're going to get. Uh, some, sometimes it's just not about money. Um, life, obviously you have to pay bills and um, you really have to be okay financially, if not far more, but um, happiness comes from you being happy um, than getting the money out of it. I think that's why we work hard behind the scenes to be ready to compete and really be able to show people that we can do everything, we can conquer everything if we like, really work together. I think this property is a good example for that. You mentioned goals, having a clear vision. The upcoming Commonwealth Games in Gold Coast, they're taking place in April. And at the last Commonwealth Games in Glasgow, the team unfortunately lost in the fifth place playoff to Malawi. And that was a really difficult defeat, I think, for the team. What are the goals and the hopes for the upcoming Commonwealth Games? In looking at the way the Spa Proteas has been performing um, from last year up until now, I really definitely say, even on my side, I'll say the side can look forward into like, getting a medal out of the Commonwealth Games, it's going to be hard. That's never easy to look forward to, but it's something that we can really work um, and try to achieve. And I think we are at a stage where we can just play against every country that comes in front of us. And it's such a great feeling if you think of Nepal as being amateur or semi-professional, I don't know how we call it, but being really be able to uh, perform and compete for the full 60 minutes against the professional netball teams, the girls that can see and train with each other anytime, um, almost every day. It doesn't happen for us, but yet we can still comp um, compete and perform like we're doing against them. So nothing can stop us in striving to get a medal in Commonwealth Games and really looking forward to see what we can do there as a side. I am inspired just listening to you. And we're going to end off with the quote that most inspires you. A motto that you live by, what is it? I've got one that says, um, whatever a mind um, can conceive and receive, it can achieve. And I, I, I like this quote because I can't remember who um, came up with it, but I like it because it, to me it says, what I believe I can achieve, I can or, always, I can always achieve it. Doesn't matter the circumstances, doesn't matter the challenges as long as you know what you're striving for, as long as you know what you want in life, what you want to achieve, you can always achieve. You can always find the correct people um, to speak to, to communicate with. You can always find people to advise on how to go about into doing things. And then your passion and obviously your character working towards what you want to achieve, definitely it's a standard you can achieve it. So I like that quote. And I love how you just unpacked that for us. We wish you all the best of luck uh, with the national team for the Commonwealth Games as well as your season with the uh, Adelaide Thunderbirds. Oh, thank you so much. Thanks for having me. That is Bongiwe Msomi. She's not only Hammersdale's darling, the darling of her family, she's the darling of KZN, the darling of our national team and a netball darling, a netball star. So great to have her on the Ladies Club. Remember, you can continue the conversation on social media. And until we meet again, remember that greatness is never given. It's always earned. Until next week, bye-bye.